Hello everyone and welcome back to Utopia. Today's video is a very special video, it's a video about Switzerland. Not Switzerland in a general way, but from the point of view of a medical doctor. As you know, I've been making videos about how to become a doctor in Germany, how is it paid, how do you do it, and whether it's worth it or not, and different characteristics about working in Germany. Today I am going to try to compress all of those videos and do just one video about Switzerland. The idea is that if you are not quite sure whether you want to work in Germany or in Switzerland, that this video should give you a clear picture of the main difference between them and also answer some questions that you might have. The main three questions that come to my mind which are very important are first, whether it's possible for a non-Swiss person who graduated in medicine not in Switzerland to work in Switzerland as a medical doctor. The second question would be whether that's a good idea, whether it's worth it, how much does it pay, how much does it cost living over there, and how are the working characteristics. And the third question that would come to mind is if I have decided that I want to work in Switzerland, how do I do it? How do I apply and get my diploma recognized in order to get the Swiss Appellation? The first question I could answer right now, the answer is yes. It is possible for a non-Swiss person who graduated outside of Switzerland to work over there. If you graduated inside the European Union, it's extremely easy to get the Swiss Appellation. If you graduated outside of the European Union, it might be a bit more tricky, but both are possible. Now, in order to answer the second question, we need to get a bit deeper in the topic. So, before I start with all of the details, there's two things you need to keep in mind. The first thing that you should keep in mind is that this video includes my personal opinion, which is biased, and you might have a different feeling about it if you had the same experience I did. So, you have to take it with a grain of salt and also do your own research and listen to other people what other people have to say. Also, it's important that you know that I am right now not working in Switzerland as a medical doctor and I never have. I do have the Swiss approbation to work in Switzerland as a doctor, however, I haven't used it so far. I did work over there like two years ago, but not as a doctor, but as a practicant. There I got my experience with Switzerland. Now let's get to know how Switzerland is as a country. Switzerland is located between France, Germany and Italy and over there they speak all three languages French, German and Italian. In the west of Switzerland, close to France, they speak mostly French. In the north of Switzerland, close to Germany, they speak mostly German and you guessed it, in the south, close to Italy, they speak mostly Italian. If you were to go over there to work as a medical doctor, you would have to apply to the region in which they speak the language that you speak. So if you speak German, you will have to go to the north of Switzerland and there apply for a job. If you were to apply for the job in the west of Switzerland, no one would hire you. And of course here, knowing two of the three languages helps a lot. Switzerland is divided in smaller regions just like any country and these smaller regions are called cantons. These cantons, unlike other countries, have a lot of independence from each other, what means that they are allowed to change any tax and almost any law. As a result, interestingly, the different cantons fight with each other in order to attract the Swiss citizens. And they fight with each other by lowering the taxes and trying to keep the services either the way they are or increasing them. That makes Switzerland a very, very efficient country. If one canton is not well managed and is not efficient, they cannot keep up with the low taxes or with the high services and the citizens will just go away from it. As a result, Switzerland becomes a country with almost no corruption. If that wasn't enough, nothing bad really happened in Switzerland for a long time. No war, no great diseases or economic breakdown. Nothing bad really happened there for a long time and as a result, citizens are very happy very polite, they are very rich, and everything just seems to work better in Switzerland. From the point of view of an outsider, it might look like the perfect country to live, with beautiful mountains, high salaries, low taxes, and a lot of happiness everywhere. However, not everything is as nice as it looks like. First of all, out of all the three languages they speak in Switzerland, German is the dominant one on top of the other two. But the German they speak is not a normal German, it's a Swiss German. It's a dialect of it. And Swiss people are very protective of their identity and their traditions. So they are also very protective of their own Swiss German and they try to speak it as much as they can. They do understand the normal German or whole Deutsch, 
but they try not to speak. So if you were to move over there to work, you would have to additionally also learn the Swiss German. The cost of living in Switzerland is one of the main reasons why working and living in Switzerland is a great idea. It's in the very top of both cost of living indexes and purchasing power indexes. A high purchasing power means that regardless of the price of things, the salary that you get compensates that cost. Meaning that in a country with a high purchasing power, regardless of the price of things, you would never be struggling with paying the rent, your car, your food, your clothes and your basic needs. On top of that, it's also in the very top of the cost of living. Now, although cost of living might sound like something bad because it's more expensive to live there, remember the purchasing power already compensates for it. So what happens is that whenever you move out of Switzerland, whether it's on vacations or whether after say 10-20 years of working in Switzerland, you want to go back to your roots and you move back and you notice that everything is stupidly cheap. So cheap that if you worked long enough in Switzerland, you might not have to ever work again when you come back, if you ever want to move back, of course. When it comes to the salary, Switzerland is different from most other countries. In Switzerland, there is no rule that says that a doctor should get paid this concrete amount of money. There are a lot of factors which change the amount you get paid. There is a specialty, there is your experience, there is your age, in which canton you are living, and many other factors. But if you were to take all of the salaries of a first year resident in Switzerland and make an average of them and give you a number, that number would be 7,200 Swiss francs, which are about 6,500 euros. This is a brutal number, which has to be converted after the tax, it converts to approximately 5,500 euros. What does this number mean relative to the cost of living? Well, I haven't worked there as a doctor. I have worked there only as a practicant and therefore I was trying to live as cheap as possible to the extreme because I just couldn't afford living in Switzerland. But I do have one colleague who works there as a resident and uh, when he was a first year resident he told me that yeah, he gets in his bank account approximately 5,000 euros a month and on top of that he needs to make certain payments because Switzerland covers your retirement insurance in a special way and there is also health insurance and there was the car and the apartment but he said that he went to restaurants whenever he wanted and he did a lot of trips and he was always accumulating out of those 5,000 euros, he was always accumulating 2,000 every month in his bank account after paying everything, including his food and his clothes. Of course, later on, once you become a specialist, you go one step higher and you get paid a lot more. The numbers I'm about to give you, they are official numbers, which are posted in the webpage of the Ministry of Health under the statistics section. Uh, I will put a link in the description down below. This is a paper which is approximately 80 pages long, so that you can read it yourself. There's no trick here. Again, how much you get paid as a specialist depends on whether it's private, uh, public, whether you are working in someone's hospital, or whether you have your private clinic. But once again, you could compress everything and make an average. And the average tells that normally, all of the specialists get at least 200,000 Swiss francs a year. This means 180,000 euros a year, which given a approximately 20% tax, which is not high in Switzerland, and divided by 12 months a year, you shouldn't get as a specialist anything less than 12,000 euros a month. Of course, a lot of that has to go to other expenses such as house and car and food, but as we saw, if you were getting 5,000 euros, you could get to accumulate 2,000. Imagine how much you get to accumulate at the end of every month and in saving if you are getting paid about 12,000 euros every month. Now you know what I mean with if you were to go back to your country after a couple of years. Yes, getting paid a lot of money is great, but it's only great as long as you have opportunities to spend it. That's why talking about working hours and working conditions is important in this case. In Switzerland, just like in Germany, you work approximately as a base between 40 and 50 hours depending on the policy of the hospital. On top of that, you need to put the night shifts. So every week you get easily to the 60 hours. This, let's be honest, is not great, but it's our job. We knew it was like that when we got in, so this is no different from any other country. The difference here is that in Switzerland, unlike in Germany where you have 30 days of vacations a year, in Switzerland you have 20. 
doesn't seem like a great difference, but once you start rolling and you start working every day, you notice that 20 days of vacations a year is nothing, and you might see the years go by in front of your eyes. It's definitely something to think about. When it comes to working quality, let's be honest, medicine never had a great working quality. He worked a lot and it's very stressful both mentally and physically and making any mistake can be terrible. But then again, this is something we already knew. The real question here is how is the working quality compared to other countries? I would say that every hospital is different, so you have to always keep that in mind. But generally, Switzerland has more resources. More resources mean that you, as a doctor, get better machines to work with, more tests to be able to do at any time, and just better quality at your disposal. On top of that, and a very important thing, is the ratio resident attending doctor. Normally, there is many residents and very few attending doctors in the department. So whenever you have a problem, you might have no one to work with. In Switzerland, the ratio is very high, meaning there is a lot of attending doctors compared to residents. That means that you have always someone there to control you and always someone there to take the responsibility for you and you rarely are alone without knowing what to do. This is a great difference between Germany and Switzerland. If we were to compare the support you get from your Oma Erste with learning how to swim, Switzerland would be in a very warm pool when you're a baby with your parents and Germany would be more like kicking you into the water and you better learn for your life. Now don't get me wrong, there's pros and cons on both sides. I personally in Germany am doing things that in Switzerland I wouldn't be allowed to do or to learn in many years. So I am learning a lot because of that. But I must say when it comes to the peace of mind of working as a resident, here Switzerland gets a plus one. Now, my personal experience with Switzerland. As you know, regardless of the video, I always give my personal experience regarding the topic. So here it goes. Like I said before, I did not work in Switzerland as a medical resident. I did work as an Unterassistent, which means in Germany a practicant. Right after finishing university, I did not speak German good enough to take the Bates Vi exam and I wasn't yet sure what I wanted to do as a doctor. So I decided to spend one year between Germany and Switzerland going to different departments and different hospitals and find out what is I like and in the meanwhile improve my German. Also, my original plan was to just start working in Switzerland. I didn't want to work in Germany at all. But as I practiced a bit in Switzerland, I found some difficulties. Like I said, Swiss people are very protective of their own identity and when I was working there, at many times I felt rather lonely. I felt like I was ignored or like I was invisible. Of course, I was a practicant who didn't speak a good German and just got there. So I assumed that I was very useless and that for residents to help me, they would have to invest their own time, time that most likely they didn't have. So even though it was foreigners, the ones that were most welcome, much more in comparison to Swiss, I didn't give this much of a thought. Maybe it was all my fault. And so I went to Germany to continue my practices. And it was there in Germany where I noticed a huge difference. Everyone was much, much nicer and much more welcoming, both Germans and foreigners. Everyone was just very welcoming and very nice. And because of that, I decided to start working in Germany instead of Switzerland, being completely aware that in Germany, you have to do FSP exam, which you do not have to do in Switzerland. And being aware that you get paid much, much less in Germany than in Switzerland. But just because of the experience, I decided to go to Germany anyway. Now, remember, this is my personal experience. That's not meaning it will happen to you. I'm just giving you a warning. I should also add that I am not done with Switzerland. I think I will go back to Switzerland and work there. I just don't know when. So we want to answer the question number two, whether it's a good idea or not to work in Switzerland. Let's divide between pros and cons and see what's going on. As pros, higher salary, working quality, it does not require an FSP exam and no matter what happens in the world, Switzerland will be just fine. When it comes to the cons, first of all, there is less vacation days. You might feel that you don't really fit in, you might not feel quite welcome and you will need to learn the Swiss German, which is a pain in the ass. 
So it's up to you to decide whether working in Switzerland is a good or a bad idea. Now, moving on to the third question of the video. Okay, Utopia, great video. You convinced me I do want to work in Switzerland. Uh, I just graduated in whatever country and I have my diploma of the page by. Now, how do I become a Swiss doctor? How do I get my approbation? Who do I need to send the papers to? And what papers? Here is another major difference between Germany and Switzerland. In Germany, every single region has their own way of accepting your diploma. They have their own so-called Regierung and they have their own rules on the way they do it. And you need to contact them and they tell you what you need to bring them and what in which way. In Switzerland, even though there's a lot of independent cantons, when it comes to this specific topic, there is only one agency that does the approbation takes your diploma and gives you the Swiss approbation. This agency is an arm of the Ministry of Health and it's called Medbeco. So if you were to go to the webpage of the Ministry of Health, you could find Medbeco and finding Medbeco you would find the two different ways there are to become a Swiss medical doctor. The two different ways depend on where you got your diploma. If you got your diploma in the European Union, then you do the so-called direct acceptance of your diploma. And if you got it outside of the European Union, you get the indirect one. The truth is that the direct one is much, much easier. And uh, that's the one I did and it was incredibly fast and easy. While the indirect one, I read it a bit and I believe you need to have three years of experience already working and you need to prove it. So it's much more challenging. Here I already did the research for you and you don't need to go to the webpage of the Ministry of Health and find these PDFs in which they tell you exactly which documents you need to bring or not. I already found the PDFs and I will put in the description below the links so that you just click on them and see which paper you need to bring and whether those papers need to be translated or not and what kind of translation. Also, if you happen to be already a specialist, there is another link that you can follow where they accept your specialty. So you start working there as a specialist. This, I'm not quite sure. I believe it's only for European doctors. When I got my Swiss approbation, I remember I sent all of the papers and one week later they sent me a letter saying that they were processing them. One week later they told me everything was fine and that I had to pay 800 euros to this processing whatever. So I paid the 800 euros and they sent me two weeks later my approbation and my card of a Swiss doctor. So very easy. No FSP required, no exam required to get in Switzerland. So don't forget to check the description because I will put the links to the studies regarding how much you get paid over there. Other links, this is official links from the Ministry of Health, links regarding the working quality in Switzerland and also for the approbation to get the Anerkennung of your diploma, what you need to do. Everything will be in the description down below. And I believe that is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. I hope that if you weren't sure whether you wanted to work in Switzerland or not, now you have a broader idea of what it implies. And if you were sure, then I hope that now you know exactly every single step you need to follow. If by any chance you have some research that you would like to share with the community or you would like to ask some question about some topic I didn't quite touch or I didn't explain well, just make a comment and I will ask. Other than that, I wish you all a great day, stay healthy and see you next time.